when you and I talked, I guess it was a year and a half ago, we talked about your career and how much longer you thought you would want to keep doing this. What made the decision for you that, you know what? It's time. Just a lot of different little things. I am 73 years old, and I, and I know I look like I'm like 68, and I appreciate that very much. Um, but I just thought that I, I'm not happy with, in, in some cases, where, where our business is going. I, I just don't enjoy dealing with the athletes the way I used to, because we don't get to deal with the athletes the way we used to. The games themselves tend to bore me a lot, which is not a healthy thing for um you know, your main sportscaster. But as much as anything, I've been driven by the simple fact that I always wanted to leave a year early instead of a year late. And I think too many people in, in, in our business, it, it's hard to give up. I mean, it really is. But it's like the great athletes. Most of them don't want to retire until they eventually have somebody kind of pushing them toward the door. And I, um, I wanted to find the door on my own. Now it's Joe Trahan's turn. It's Mike yeah. Leslie's turn. It's Jonah Javad's turn, um, and, and you know I'll, I'll I'll find my happiness at a at a card table or a patio party or something. I I, I think I will. Well, certainly a lot of hardware that I think serves as a stamp of approval of, of the impact that you made uh, during your time here in Dallas Fort Worth. But I, I I remember hearing back in the day, and I'm hoping you can kind of clear this up for me, uh, that you would get those phone calls as people in high profile jobs do. Hey. This is ESPN. Yeah. This is Fox. Yeah. And then you turned it down because you wanted to stay in North Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, ESPN called me. And, uh, and this is my favorite, one of my favorite stories. It was 1983, and I had just started at, mm -hmm. uh, at WFAA. So, one, I, I didn't feel like I could bail on him. But as my 12-year-old son at the time said, you know it's ESPN, right? Yeah. I've always loved sports, like, like most kids do. I always grew up loving sports. But I don't really care if, if Philadelphia is playing the Giants. I just don't. If Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith and Michael Irvin and Kevin Gogan and Darren Woodson are playing the Giants, I care a great deal. And I don't care if Boston beats the Lakers nearly as much as I care if Dirk Nowitzki and his team, mm -hmm. you know. And, and at the same time, I'm serious about this. I, I fell in love with North Texas when I stepped mm -hmm. off the plane. I called my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, and I said, you want to die in Dallas, Texas? And she said, what are you talking about? I said, well, I'm going to die in Dallas, Texas, and I'd like you to come die here with me. <laughs> and she did. Romantic. Yeah, she did. <laughs> it's got everything I want. It's got everything I want. So why would I leave that to pursue some goal that somebody else wants to put on me? Oh, I want to talk about uh, legacy. What do you hope your legacy is in this market <clears throat> as a broadcaster? Do you uh, think about that kind of thing? I, I probably should say no, but but uh, but I do. Yeah, of course I do. I think we all do, quite frankly. I, I, I simply want to be remembered as the guy who tried to make it a better place. Make it a better place for my, my kids, uh, almost more importantly for my granddaughter. Try to do everything I can to make that world just a little bit better. I, I would kind of wish that people would walk by and go, you know, he's crazy. You know, he's crazy. But the man made you think. Because that's all I ever tried to do. I mean, it is interesting to hear you talk about legacy because I feel like I am in some ways uh, a little bit of your legacy because interning uh, in the sports department <laughs> yeah. underneath you, uh, not that long ago. <laughs> I remember the reason I wanted to intern at Channel 8 was because I grew up watching your sports casts. And what I enjoyed about it most was you weren't up there trying to do your best ESPN Sports Center. No, right, 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 right. You were telling a story. You had a take on whatever we were watching and you had an opinion. Love it, hate it, you had an opinion. And I liked that aspect, but it was when I got to Channel 8 as an intern and I watched you work on Sundays, the amount of time you spent writing, rewriting, and revising your sports cast. Mm -hmm. You didn't go up there and wing it. You really spent a lot of time on the craft. And, and that made such a huge impression yeah. on a college age kid. Yeah. Well, the words matter to me. I mean, the words matter to me a great deal. I, I, I think I, I, I can write relatively quickly for the most part, but I do go back and, and I revise a lot of stuff that I write. And, and the other part of that that you talk about is I've always almost always done sports with an opinion. I think the best part of sports is the opinions. You know, the 
the Cowboys win 22 to 10. Yeah, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. But arguing about who and how and why they won, that's the fun of it. That's the real fun of it. So I brought that to the sportscast, which in the beginning was a little bit raw for some people. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I mean, I appreciate that because listening to you as the color voice of the uh, Cowboys for some yeah, time, yeah, right, yeah, Sam, yeah. And, you know, you, you told it like it was. And when the times were great, that was great. And when they weren't so great, you know what? You got the hook. But they didn't hire you to just inject flowers. Or well, I mean, I thought they did. Brad Sham had a great line. We did the Cowboys game objectively from the Cowboys' point of view. Hmm. And I love that line because it really is the reality. Back in the glory days, if, if Aikman threw a great pass, well, we liked that a little bit more sure. than when he threw the interception. But it didn't mean when he threw the interception that we didn't say... What the heck was he looking at? Yeah, it was triple covered. What are you seeing? What, what are you What are you looking at? Yeah. Well, you might appreciate this. When I get my first on-air job, weekend sports guy for the NBC affiliate in Sherman Denison. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I would sit down to get my sports cast ready. And in my mind, I would ask myself, what would Dale say? <laughs> what would Dale say? At the time, NBC launched the XFL. Yeah. And every yeah. time I would reference the XFL, I thought to myself, what would Dale say? And I would call them the soon to be X X. <laughs> One day our general manager calls me in. That's a great line, by the so, way. Thank you. I came up with it on my own. <laughs> That's a great uh, line. General manager calls me and sits me down and says, Hey, I appreciate what you're trying to do here, but we're NBC, we're part owners of yeah, the right, XFL. Right, right. I would appreciate it if you wouldn't call it the X XFL. And even though I got in trouble for that, I walked out of that meeting thinking, Dale would be proud. I would be very proud. I, I want to play just a little, uh, a little rapid fire. Oh, okay. As, as, as I'm not real back. good at this, but oh, I'll be yeah. even more fun. Uh, Favorite athlete to have covered in North Texas? That that is an incredibly hard question. If you want to just uh, restrict it to North Texas, uh, probably Troy Aikman. Mm. Uh, uh, great athlete. Uh, fun, fun times in the early '90s, hanging with him and the like. Favorite sport. Football. Favorite team. So if you look back over all the teams, you know, I want like a year. So favorite team. Dallas Cowboys, early 90s. Mm. Uh, Dallas Cowboys, early 80s for that matter. Mm. Yeah. Uh, least favorite sport. Soccer by a wide margin. It would be it would be such a route if you were actually to put a number on it. I would say it'd be like two to nothing. Uh, favorite sporting event you covered in North Texas. Uh, Super Bowl. It, Pasadena? I mean, that, that, that's special. Every game that matters should be played at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. You can't get there, and you can't get out of there, but when you're there... Magic. It, it's unbelievable magic. magic. Do you feel like you have a sense of, of the lasting impact that you have made on North Texas? Since I announced my retirement in April, um, uh, the, the response and the emails and the letters, uh, I, I just... Just yesterday, I'm sitting in my chair crying. I, I promise you, I'm sitting in my chair crying um, because people are telling me and quoting things that I've said in my commentaries from years ago. One man sent me a picture of his dog and he said, I had to put my dog down the other day. And he said, but I always remember what you said. I choose the tears mm -hmm. because every relationship we have will end poorly. It always does. The only way you can avoid the pain is to choose not to love. I choose the tears. This guy remembers that for some goofy reason. When I wrote about Michael Sam and a young man came up to me at a sales party for Channel 8 and, and gives me a hug and says, he starts crying and says, you know, my, my dad uh, uh, called me. I'm like, okay. He says, no, you don't understand. My dad threw me out of the house when I was 18 because I came out. And he called me there and I guess this guy's now like 30. And he said, he called me there tonight and he said, I, I still don't understand your life. But he said, if that old fat Hanson says it's okay, then you and I are going to figure it out. As arrogant as it does sound, um, I think I've had an impact. I, I, I hope I've had an impact. I've always wanted to be that guy that, that makes it just a little bit better uh, for those who come behind me. And I hope I've done that. Well, I'll, I'll say sitting here, I think um, I certainly... Uh, and, and part of that legacy is somebody who watched you working and watched you on television and, and now uh, gets to work literally alongside you. Uh, 
just, I think the example that you set in how you approached your on-camera work, how you approached the writing, the impact that you had, you know, even shouting out the attributes of our local high school scholar athletes, I mm -hmm. think, mm -hmm. makes yeah. a big difference. And I know for me, it, it kind of set the gold standard. Uh, and, and obviously, I think <laughs> I'm not the only person who thinks so. You know, if, if none of those viewers can say thank you, I will, uh, oh, no. because it, it certainly made an impact on me and it, it motivated me to be better, to try harder and to, to try to do this job as well as I can. And, I, and I'm, I'm still getting better, I hope, trying to improve everything. Yeah, I think you're gonna do all right. I think you'll do all right. So fingers crossed, but deep debt of gratitude. Uh, for you. Thank so thank you. you. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. All right. We well, good? Yeah, we're good. Huh? I'm kind of hard to interview. I know I don't give you much to talk about. You know? <laughs>